So after the absolute shambles that was August, we have managed to turn things around. We are back on the 31st of October. We've got about six games to go before we do our little winter break. We have some transfer business to talk about. I think we may well have just picked up an absolute superstar for nothing. Nicholas Madsen was released or his contract expired at Westerlo in Belgium. He's been sat on a free transfer. I didn't notice this until about four or five days after the transfer window closed. Madsen's good. We've brought him in on a permanent deal. He's not actually played for us yet. And we've also agreed a deal which annoyingly I wanted to get done before the window closed but we kind of couldn't get it over the line. Luke Musikiri is a Zimbabwean winger and striker joining for £2,000 from Dynamo Harari. I think he's good. I mean, my scouts think I should sign him as a priority. There were a couple of other teams also in Denmark that were looking to sign him as well. So I kind of had to jump at the chance. As for results, we've only lost one match in between episodes but we did manage to win against Norgesland. Reginaldo, the left-back of all people scoring the goal there, a 2-1 win against AGF, Lecoq and Pete. Looting against Bromby, a 3-1 win against Viable Pete with a brace, Lecoq as well. Anderson, Niangbo, Frankie Dogbowl scoring off the bench. I think that one was off the bench against Velia, but it is dropped points because they scored in the 94th minute to equalise that one. We also drew 1-1 with AAB Montano with the goal in this so, we're currently up in third place, and there is a very big gap between first and second in the table. It is, I mean, it's still early days, but what is that? Nine, eight points between Randers and Copenhagen. I don't think we're going to be winning the league, but if we can stick where we are, I would say that's a very successful season. In other news as well, we've managed to convince the board to invest some of the money that we've picked up over the last couple of seasons by doing our training facilities, our youth facilities and increasing our junior coaching. I think it was junior coaching. There's a few bits, basically, they've gone, yeah, we'll do that. So, some money has left the club, but it's going to good causes. Should I ask them to buy the stadium? It's going to save us a whole load of money, and basically all they'll do is they'll get, just get a loan out to buy the stadium. So if we do that, they buy the stadium. It saves us, like, quarter of a million pounds a year, which isn't a huge amount of money, but it's still money. We'll probably spend more than that on loan repayments. I don't know whether it was a good idea. Right then, let's play Micheland away from home, so it's not going to be the easiest of games. It's going to be Ojo, Mortensen, Olesema, De Beer and Reginaldo in defence. Strunken Madsen in the middle of the pitch today. Madsen getting his squad number and making his debut. Peter Montano, Mayer and Lecoq leading the lines. Mayer is still annoyed. He's still annoyed because I shouted at him and fined him because he was poor against Horsens in the last episode. But he was poor against Horsens in the last episode. I feel vindicated and justified. Micheland have not started their season particularly well. They're still a good side. They've still got some very good players, but they are currently, I think, down in 7th or 8th place in the league. So they are underperforming. We, obviously, after the mess that was August, we kind of got our footing and we seem to be doing quite well at the moment. Five minutes on the clock. Mortensen with the ball. Finds Madsen on his debut. Strunk lumps it forward. It's going to be Reginaldo to collect it. Four in the box. Lecoq is one. And Antonin Lecoq gets into double figures for the season. Five minutes played. One nil up against Micheland away from home. This has already started better than the last episode, hasn't it? The first match of the last episode of the season on camera started so badly. And after 10 minutes, we are already in front. It's a big kick from the keeper. Madsen collects it. Plays it all the way back. Madsen's in a weird position. I wouldn't expect him to be there. Gets the ball back. Ball forward towards Pete. He's running forward into some space. Plays it across Mayer on the volley. It was a difficult chance. If he was a little bit slower, he might have actually been in a better position to volley that. Ten minutes left of the first half. It's kind of a quiet game, to be honest. There's been a couple of highlights. Obviously, the early goal, but not a lot else. And everything has been us. Reginaldo's with the ball down the left-hand side. Goes for a run. Plays forward to Lecoq but can't get towards him. In fact, Lecoq can do the hard work himself, runs towards goal, he's a bit greedy. Pete is there to mop up the pieces. I don't think this is offside. They're going to call Pete for being offside. I reckon when Lecoq actually kicked the ball, Pete was behind him. Goal is disallowed. I mean, I'm not sure how. How was he disallowed? Surely Pete cannot be offside. He was offside. Well, this season, we seem to be getting a lot more VAR. Don't we? Is that, or is that just me thinking we're getting a lot more VAR? Half-time, we are 1-0 up against Michelin. That is a very good score so far. And we've been clearly the better side. If we can get ourselves another goal or two in the second half, 
I'm going to be a very happy manager. Pete to Mayer, across to Montano. Pete's carried on his run, but May uh, Montano loses it, gets it back. Lecoq curls one towards the top, just wide of the post. Still 1-0, but we are looking so much better than we did in the last episode. I'm wondering whether it was a fitness thing, because last episode, we had a big break. At the end of last episode, we had like a two-week international break, and everyone kind of got their fitness back, and then we started performing. So maybe that was the main problem. Reginaldo with the ball loses out to Grubb, or Gruber, not quite sure. We're going to call him Grubb. Grubb has the ball back, down the line, finds Anderson, gets past Reginaldo, but Reginaldo's trying to keep pace with him, crosses in, and it's in the bottom corner for Marini. It's not in the bottom corner, it's going to be offside. Obviously, we do have to have VAR first. So, I mean, it's, I feel like this one's going to count. I think it's going to count. It has counted. It is 1-1. So, the second half, Michelin have come out swinging. First chance goes their way and goes into the back of the net. They've potentially got themselves another chance as well. Grubb's got it on the right-hand side. Reginaldo's with him. It's taken a wicked deflection. Oli Semmer needs to clear that. He does clear it. Pete is going to get the ball clear further. Right, we need to do ourselves a change. Maya is coming off. It's going to be Barry coming on. I think we're going to go for that. Do we swap you two round? Or do we... I mean, can Barry play as a pressing forward? I don't really know what a pressing forward is. Can he do it? I'm going to go with yes. He doesn't have the aggression, but everything else seems to be kind of there. So we're going to stick with that. Pete is also going to come off for Frankie Dogbowl. Reginaldo with a throw. Lecoq collects it. We've got 12 minutes of normal time. Tin to Ollie Summer. Right-hand side is Mortensen. Dogbowl's in front if he wants to use him. Mortensen's going to try and go it alone. There are five blue shirts in the box if he can cross it in. Montano has won. Montano heads just over the bar. We had so many blue shirts in there then. That was nuts. Final five minutes. Are we going to get ourselves another chance? Are Michelin going to get themselves another chance? No, I don't think is going to be the answer. Uh, it's, uh, it's two minutes, actually. Maybe something will happen. Barry's going to get there. Barry doesn't get there. Ortiz. Anderson. Back to Ortiz again. Can we steal it? Don't. Oh, it's going to be a goal, isn't it, for Michelin? Grubb with the ball. Crosses it in. Fossum is there. What a save that is from Ojo. Corner comes in quickly. Clearance from Oli Semmer. Talas Costa collects it on the right-hand side. Can we steal it? Slide from Barry. Doesn't get it. It's fallen for Grubb. Ojo can save that one. Surely that is the end of the game. A 1-1 draw on paper. I, I, I take. I guess you take it. It's away from home against a good Michelin side. An underperforming Michelin side, but a good Michelin side. Reginaldo can't see the line, apparently. Just walk that straight off the pitch. 93 minutes have ticked over. So it is going to be a 1-1 draw against Michelin. And realistically, I'd say that was a fair result. We didn't take our chances in the first half when we were the better side. In the second half, the team talk clearly did something good, didn't it? And uh, a 1-1 one -one draw, we'll take it. So I think we're about a third of the way through the season and we are currently sat fourth place in the table. Next up, we are going to play Silkborg on camera. However, we do have to play Copenhagen off camera. I'm not showing you that one because I suspect we're probably just going to lose. We will also see AAB and the Horsens games, all the results of in this episode. And then obviously we move into the big two month, nearly three month, two and a half month break for winter, where I assume in Denmark, it's just ice. And that's probably why they just don't play football at that point. Right, we are back the other side of the Copenhagen game where it was a nil nil draw. We played route one football and it kind of worked. We were very defensive. We didn't score any goals, but we also didn't concede any. So I'm pretty happy with that. You might be wondering why we're looking at this page. Obviously, we're still fourth place in the table. However, competition reputation for the Superliga has increased from 19th to 15th in the space of two seasons. And that means Denmark have an extra European qualifying spot for this season. If we take a look at the championship group, the fourth place team also get a chance to qualify for the Europa Conference League. I don't think that's correct anymore. I feel like that should drop down to there or maybe even fifth place in the table have a chance to qualify for Europe, which means if you finish in the promotion group or the championship group, you could be playing Europe. You have a one in five or one in six chance of not playing in Europe, essentially, in those positions. And I haven't looked at this for a while, but we were 17th. Obviously, we are slowly climbing up coefficients means qualification places. We are currently 16th. We've had a reasonable year so far. There are still games to play. I'm hoping Copenhagen are doing all right when it comes to Europe, which means we might improve on the 30.15. And it might mean that we can climb up one more place 
will give us a chance to actually have two teams in the Champions League. That would be absolutely massive for us, would be absolutely massive for Denmark as a nation as well, I think, because the more teams you get in the Champions League, the more money that potentially comes into the league and so on and so forth. So it's something that we really do need to try and do. Not that we're in control of this at the moment, because when we get into Europe, we normally lose. We did help a little bit this season. I assume Copenhagen are still the team in Europe. They are, and they're in, they're in the Champions League group stages. So that's big. That is absolutely massive because it means they get to play some teams that arguably they might be able to beat. Man City, probably not. Sturm Graz, you'd think they could beat those. Fenerbahce, you reckon they could get something out of Fenerbahce as well. Lazio might be a struggle. Liverpool might be a struggle as well. So there's potentially some more chance for points there. They've already beaten Celtic. They've already beaten Valencia. They've lost against Monaco. They've beaten Ferenc Varos, Karabag as well. So having... Copenhagen in the Champions League is good. Another team that is still in Europe, but not doing as well, is uh, a AGF. That's what they're called. I nearly tried to say this. I'm not going to say that. It's AGF. However, they've lost. They're in the Europa League proper, which is good, but they've lost against Lyon. They've beaten uh, Voskla. They've lost against Ludogorets. They've lost against Benfica. They beat Lugano and Rakov, and it looks like Hammerby to get into the Europa League. So they're still in with a chance. They should hopefully beat Shekindija. They should hopefully beat Hibs. They should hopefully beat Antwerp. I'm not holding out too much hope there. Bromby were another team that also managed to get into the Europa Conference League qualifiers. They beat Vaders and then drew with Vaders and then got knocked out by Maccabi Haifa. So Bromby did as well, a little bit worse than we did. So of the teams that managed to qualify for Europe last year, only two of them remain. But if they do okay in the coming fixtures... That is going to help us when it comes to getting better coefficients in the future and more teams playing in Europe and hopefully more teams in the Champions League. Anyway, we're currently on an international break, which means we've got another week to go until we play Silkborg, so we'll be back for that in just a second. Now, I don't think we've seen this formation on camera for a very long time, if ever, in fact, but we're going to go for it against Silkborg, away from home, a team that are, for some reason, quite good at the moment. I think they're third place in the table. It's going to be Ojo Mortensen, Olisema De Beer and Reginaldo in defence. As the anchor man is going to be Strunk, Larson and Madsen in the midfield. Peter, Montano and Lecoq will be leading the line. We've got three Danish midfielders there. That pleases me. I'm not saying we're going to stick with this formation against Silk Borg. They're playing a 4-4-2. Okay, I mean, having a slightly different formation than the opposition might be kind of good in our favour because we can, in theory, overload the midfield with our three midfielders to their two. We've got less strikers, but we've also got the wingers. I'm trying to understand tactics. I don't know tactics. Morton, some of the free kick for us after seven minutes. Lecoq is leading the line by himself, so he needs to kind of be getting near the ball. We don't want him to be kind of a target man. He's not. I don't think he's really got the attributes to be a target man. Engel collects it. For Silkborg on the left-hand side. Crosses it in. Tin clears it. Montano collects. Lecoq, no support at the moment. Needs to hold up play. De Beer to Madsen to Larson through to Lecoq. Tries to get some space for himself. Goes for a long range. Absolute rocket of a shot, but it goes just over. Throw for Engel. Silkborg then in a good position once again. But last time this happened, we did intercept it. Tin De Beer scored an own goal. Tin De Beer has scored an own goal. Really, guy? It said De Beers missed interception caused that goal. I don't think he missed it. He definitely got the interception because he put it in the back of the net. It's 1-0 to Silkborg. I don't think this formation's working. Do you? I don't think this is working. We might need to switch up. We'll leave it until half time and see where we are. But I think we might need to go back to the 4-2-4 formation. Silkborg again coming forward. Long ball towards Engel. Crosses it in. It's taken a few deflections. Jorgensen makes it 2-0. I think it's time to change now. Now, we don't really have the players on the pitch that can play in the positions that we've got. However, I don't want to do subs just yet. I feel like it's a risky move to do subs at the moment. So we're going to push Mads Larsen to be the left winger. Montano and Lecoq are going to be our strikers for the final five minutes of the first half. 2-0 down. 2-0 down. And it looks like it's another mistake. as a missed header this time from Oli Semmer. Tins on a 6-1. Lecoq's on a 6-2. Oli Semmer's on a 6.4. It's another game. I mean, look at this. This is horrendous. An XG of 0.27 and there's two goals. I mean, that's an XG of 0.27 for both teams. That is awful. Pump fists. Um, let's, um, what do we say? Hands on hips. Let's do the teapot. 
weirdly doing the teapot kind of worked, didn't it? Right, Oli Summer then with an early free kick for us. Obviously no changes at half time. Maybe I should look at doing something. Pete collects it. Three in the box if he can get the cross in. He does so. Lecoq is there. Lecoq over the bar. I feel like we're going to lose this game and it's not going to be through want of trying. Larson's injured. That's not the end of the world because he's kind of out of position anyway. We're going to do Anderson Niangbo. Frankie Dogbowl's coming on. Mayer's going to come on as well for Lecoq. Do we also do that? Do we just do Barry and Mayer? We do do Barry and Mayer. Engels throw. Manning collects it. Tries to cross. Doesn't manage to get it anywhere though. Sol finds Jorgensen. No, he doesn't. Reginaldo's there. Jorgensen keeps hold of the ball though. They're still trying to come forward. They're looking for a third goal, which makes perfect sense, to be honest. No point in sitting on a two-goal lead. Pete loses the ball in a very dangerous position. Jorgensen's there. Ojo can save that one. Tins drop down to a 5.9. 64 minutes. Strunk to Madsen. Going to go for a run. Bit of space. Lumps it towards Pete on the right-hand side. Barry's in the middle. Pete and Baz plays it back to Strunk. Goes for a long-range effort. Why are we trying that? We are 2-0 down. And we're trying to score worldies. Corner for Silkborg. Towards the front post. It's actually flicked towards the back post in the end. And Fransol makes it three. Today is a day where our defenders and strikers have refused to turn up. And Silkborgs have all turned up in, in their numbers and just played superbly well. We are the most inconsistent team at the moment. I don't know what it is. But our performances are just all over the place. Mortensen to Barry. Losers out. Manning collects it. Paulson, he's going to go for a big kick towards the right-hand side. Jorgensen controls it. I feel like this is going to be 4-0 or maybe 4-1. I feel like there's a goal in us somewhere. Tinder Beer to Anderson Nyangbo. First time we've seen him since he's come on. De Beer once again. Reggie to Nyangbo. Madsen in the middle, lumps it forward, finds Pete, chests it down well. Pete tucks that ball away. It's 3-1. It's too late for there to be a comeback, but at least we've scored a goal. And that was the last highlight of the game, and we deserve to lose. We were not very good at all. I mean, I'm not happy. I'm just going to say I'm not happy with the performance out there. Tin, you you mistake. You, mis you mistake. You I mean, that's horrible. I don't think you're a mistake, mate, but you did make a mistake. So we've gone from having a decent first month. I say first month. We played two matches in the league in July, and we won both of them. Then August was awful. One defeat, two, three defeats, one draw and one win. September, even though it was a short month, two wins and one defeat. And then moving into October, we had a win and then draw, 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 another draw and then a defeat. We need to play Horsens at the end of this episode. We're not going to do it on camera. We've also got AAB as well. We're going to go forward to the other side of the Horsens game. That kind of needs to be a win. And luckily for us, it was a win. 3-1 against AC Horsens. Lecoq, Madsen and Ozeron Wafar. I probably might just call him Valentine because that's also quite a cool name. So with that then, as we enter into December and we enter into the winter break, we are fourth place in the table. Already Copenhagen have qualified for the championship group. There's a long, long way to go. We are still in danger of dropping down into 7th, maybe even 8th place in the table. I don't think we're in a relegation scrap, which is good. However, I don't think we're safe where we currently are. Next episode, we are going to finish off the preliminary phase, but also we're going to have ourselves a January transfer window as well. What I'm probably going to do is I'm just going to come back for those two matches there. So, there is a massive gap. We are currently on the 28th of November. We're going to miss all of December, January, all of February, and most of March as well. So, there's a lot that could happen. Transfer business-wise, we've got no money and we're currently spending too much. So, don't expect a huge amount. That's why I'm not going to kind of bring you back for January. Because I don't think it's going to be particularly exciting. Also, the board didn't want to buy the, the uh, stadium either. They said it's a good idea. We just can't afford it, which is fair enough. We've only got £5.7 million in the bank. Thank you very much for watching this episode. If you did enjoy, please remember to like, subscribe to the video, share it as well. That's a thing you can do on YouTube. And I will see you in the next one where hopefully we're still in the top six.